Today on Toy Habits, we are taking a look at the most dangerous cybernetic doppelganger of He-Man, Faker, and doing some comparisons with his Motu Classics and Revelation versions. Toy Habits. And before we get into the review, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can be alerted to the latest reviews, news, and episodes when they drop. Hey everyone, welcome back to Toy Habits and today we are taking a detailed look at the first deluxe release in the Masters of the Universe Revelation line, Faker, his weapons and accessories, and making comparisons to his Masters of the Universe Classics version and the Wave 1 release of He-Man, so let's get right to it. And let's get down to business like we usually do by first looking at the box, and Faker comes in the extremely wide Masters of the Universe Revelation Deluxe Figure Window Display box, and this box is huge, and it's gorgeous, and it shows off all of the accessories that Faker comes with. And looking at the side of the box, we can see an illustration of Faker in his human He-Man form. And I love that the way that this red is slashing across the eyes. It just gives a very cool effect to Faker. And if we move down the box, we also see another illustration of Faker in more of his robot form. And it looks like his flesh is literally ripping off of his body. I love that you can also see some of the purple reflections from the scene here. And Faker just looks very Terminator-esque here. And moving further down the side of the box, you can get a glimpse of the Faker version of the Power Sword, which is super cool. And looking at the back of the box, we see another amazing illustration of Faker. And these illustrations are getting more amazing as the figures waves go by. So we see Faker set off in the background with a purple tree and what looks like to be possibly Castle Grayskull. There's a very cool mist effect that's behind him. And I love that you can see the bluish metallic skin here that really reminds you of Faker from back in the day. And again, you can see more of the flesh getting ripped off and his robotic innards being exposed here. And one of the favorite aspects that I see on the back of the box is the illustration of his head. And I love the harsh lines that they used here. And I love the facial structure and the facial definition that they've given Faker. And you can almost imagine when you put He-Man's skin over Faker that all of those lines and contours are going to make up his flesh looking appearance. And finally, moving down to the lower half of the box, we see the cross cell for the other figures that are also in this wave. So good luck and happy hunting finding them. And now that Faker is out of the box, we can take a look at the head sculpts. And what I like to do is start with his human form first and then moving to his half cyborg, half human form, and then his fully cyborged out head sculpt. And what I'm going to be doing is just focusing on different aspects of each head sculpt just to not be so repetitive in the review. So let's get started with his human head sculpt. And taking a closer look at his human head sculpt, right off the bat, you can see that his hair sculpt is very different than the original release of He-Man. So the hair is actually swept over his eyes and he's given that more traditional page boy cut. And you can see that there is some brown washing in his hair and it's actually a darker yellow than what came with the original He-Man in the first Revelation release. And zeroing in on this head sculpt, you can see that his eyes and his irises are very filled out and they're red. And so you can definitely see that this is Faker versus the regular He-Man. Also, his face has a more angular jawline and it's very pronounced. You can also see his Cupid's bow that's right in between his nose and his lips. His chin is also given more of a blunt edge to it. And he also has some red coloring in his cheeks, if you notice. And you can also see his pursed lips here. So I think it's just a very cool sculpt and a very different look for He-Man. And I know this is Faker, but it's supposed to be He-Man. And this is actually a very cool sculpt. All right. And taking a closer look at his half cyborg, half human head version, you can see that this metallic blue silvery paint 
catches the light right and it's just so reflective and so super cool. You can see a lot more angular detail and cutouts in his facial features and I did peek under the hood here with his hair just to find out that they did not paint his ear which is very interesting but you don't really see that in this particular head sculpt and I'm not sure if this paint was supposed to be extended all the way to the chin but I think it gives a very cool look and I love the way that this is outlining his face here kind of looking like it is ripped off of his face. And finally taking a look at his cyborg head sculpt you can see all of the angles here and all of the cutouts that just define this head sculpt. Even the ears are made to look robotic and if you turn them around there's even some sculpting detail here just to add to that cyborg feeling. And you can also see the definition in his jawline and his cheekbones and also the divot in his chin here. And another cool aspect to make a note of is just the divots that they have in the forehead and just the angle angular representation that they've given this figure. So as you can see, it's less rounded at the top of his head and it really has a sharp cliff coming off of his forehead. And it looks nothing like He-Man and you can basically see that if He-Man's facial features are ripped off, you definitely have a cyborg lying underneath. And moving down to Faker's torso, he is packed with He-Man's traditional chest armor. So let's get that off of him so we can see some of the up-close detail that they have on the torso here. And taking a closer look at Faker's torso, we can now see the amazing metallic detail that they've given his torso here. And I love the way that this was painted and brushed and it actually looks like it's a metal piece. And what I'm actually noticing is some of the blue that we remember from the original Faker from the 80s is that they've actually dry brushed this with a nice blue. So it kind of gives that blue Faker cast and it also just has a really nice metallic sheen to it when you catch the light. And don't get me started on these meat pieces that are just chunking all over his body. I love this sculpt. The layers of epidermis and blood, I think, are fantastic. And I love seeing this in a faker. It just makes it seem so lifelike and very Terminator-esque where we have an exoskeleton, we have an endoskeleton, and we have just the meat. So I think this is so freaking cool. You can see the blood and the outlines and you can see just the hunks of flesh coming over around his chest and wrapping around his abdomen. You can also catch that underneath his arms as well. So I really, really dig this sculpt. It's painted fantastically and I just love this representation. Now I turned up the contrast on the camera just a bit so you can see some of the blue dry brushing that they've done on this figure and hopefully it's come through because it actually gives the figure a really cool metallic blue cast. And moving down to Faker's arms, we have that same metallic color and just gooey red bloody flesh detail that you can see in his arms. And also he has this metallic elbow joint, which is very cool. And if you look at the back of his arms, you can also see some of that metallic flesh detail there as well. And the cool thing is his bracelet comes off and his bracer comes off. So let me just slip those off real quick so we can take a look and see if there's anything under it. All right, and now that those pieces are off, we can see that there is some metallic and flesh detail that we have lying underneath that wrist bracelet here that goes all the way around his wrist and it connects to the other side. And it's just a really cool feature. You can also see that there's a lot more muscle definition in these shoulder pieces here. And it's very cool. You can see the striations in both parts of the shoulders. And again, just the visual appeal of this figure is just amazing. And if you are so inclined, you can also put his orange armor on, which coincidentally is exactly Skeletor's armor, but in orange, and it's really easy to put on. There are a couple clips um, that attach to this little peg here, and they just kind of plug in, and you can actually affix them to the back, 
and get them to secure. So this piece is not super hard to put on and you can see some of the texturing detail they have on the shoulder pieces as well as the back straps. And here is Skeletor just for comparison here. And what we can see is that this Faker armor is the exact replica of Skeletor armor just with one single difference. Skeletor armor is two pieces where Faker's is one piece. Now, I typically set aside some time to review the loin armor, the belt, the legs, and the boot detail, but I just did a review on the regular release of He-Man, so if you want to check that out, go look at it there. But you can see that it's basically the same exact replica and sculpts and paints that they've used on the regular He-Man. So let's move on to the accessories. And Fager comes chocker block with accessories, and we've already gone over his head sculpts and his armor, so let's just start with his hands. Now he is packed with an open hand, which is the same hand that is packed with the first iteration of He-Man, but I just wanted to show you more detail what this looks like. It's a very cool hand sculpt and it looks pretty lifelike. You can see the fingernail detail in this sculpt, and you can see some of the palm detail that they have as well. And he has also been given a gripping hand and it's pretty much the same hand that comes with the first iteration of He-Man. So they are reusing these parts, but you can see some of the fingernail detail and you can also see some of the detail that they have with this gripping hand. And the shield is also a reused part, but I think it's cool that they have orange paint where the shield is. And I think one of my favorite aspects of these redesigned shields is the ability for the figure to grip it on its forearm in a couple places. So it has a spot for the forearm in this big opening section here and a place for him to grab the shield with his open hand. So I just think that's a very cool feature that they've added and a very nice touch to something that you're actually never gonna see because you pretty much see the shield from the front. And next up we have the power sword and this particular power sword paint app is an orange hilt with a brown wrap, which is a little bit different than the one that came with the standard version of He-Man. So we can see the differences in the blades here, but the metallic silver on the blades remains the same. So I love that the way that this orange ties in to the armor that we've gone over already. All right, and moving on to the similarities and differences, well, mostly differences between Faker and the original He-Man Revelation release, you can see that Faker has been given the more traditional He-Man page boy haircut, and you can see that it's an actual different hair sculpt, and the hair is swept over the eyes versus the first release where they're kind of swept over his forehead here, and the original hair sculpt just has a more layered look to it here versus the He-Man figure, which has less layers in it. They do have the similar brown washing, but the Faker head sculpt has a little bit darker yellow here. And really the major differences lie in the facial features with this Faker. So obviously his eyes are red, but in addition to that, he has a very strong jawline and a much stronger cheekbone than the original Revelation figure. And he has a much more defined Cupid's bow and his chin actually is more blunt than the more extended chin that you'll find on the Revelation figure. And last thing to point out here is that the coloring of Faker has been given some red coloring on his cheeks versus the Revelation release where he has a very much skin tone cheek color here. So this is actually by far my favorite head sculpt for a Revelation style He-Man figure and I wish that they had given him just normal looking eyes and I hope that future releases of a iteration of He-Man will contain this sculpt because I just think it's so much better than the first iteration of He-Man and that's what the design process is for. It's iterative, they're learning. This is a much better sculpt for a He-Man. So what I'm gonna do is Pop this head off, do an old switcheroo so we can see for yourself how great it looks. All right, I did the old switcheroo and zoomed out a little bit so if you can get past the red eyes, you can imagine how cool this head sculpt would look 
on an original release of He-Man. And I'm gonna zoom in here so you can just check out the detail here and just imagine that this is the figure that was in the first release. I think definitely this head sculpt is so much improved over the original one and I do really love it. And I hope that they release this one with blue eyes because this is my head sculpt of choice. Now I've thrown Faker's half human, half cyborg head on him just for this comparison because that's how he was in the Masters of the Universe Classics line. And you might be wondering, where the heck did this head sculpt come from? Is it a custom? No, this was actually packed in the Masters of the Universe Classics Intergalactic Skeletor figure. So that was a very cool pack in and they decided to do more of a robotic cyborg look to the Masters of the Universe Classics faker. So if you haven't had a chance to pick that up, I highly advise it just for the head sculpt alone. So you can kind of see where there are some similarities here and obviously the head sculpt on the half human half cyborg version in Revelation is not as detailed as the one that we see in classics. So if you get a little side profile, you can see a lot of the intricate detail here, which is not present in this version of Faker. And now taking a look at these figures as a whole, you can see that the blue is much less pronounced in the new Revelation version of Faker, and it's just dry brush blue that's on his torso and his exposed metal parts versus a more Skeletor-like blue for the entire figure. Now, I'm actually really bummed that they did not incorporate some of the purple that we've seen in the Fakers of the past. It could have been incorporated in the loincloth or in the boot, but I think overall the design for this Revelation Faker is fantastic. And last thing that I want to point out is the power sword. So the Revelation version of Faker is given a nod to the power swords from the classics version and also the vintage version as well, just with the incorporation of the orange here. So very cool figures and hopefully you can pick up that intergalactic Skeletor figure just for this head sculpt alone. This is the best Masters of the Universe Revelation figure to date and there are so many ways to display, pose, and just play with this figure. I honestly feel like a kid again. The attention to detail is second to none and the updated head sculpt is my favorite version of He-Man even though it's not He-Man. The fully robotic look to this figure gives it additional playability and I might just pick up another one if I can find it so I can have Faker in all of his forms. What are your thoughts on this figure? Let us know in the comments below and thanks for tuning in to Toy Habits.